been working on it a couple of years. <coughs> and I'm, in general, I'm working on the X server. And um, a year ago, I was working on AIGLX, which is what I'll be, I'll be talking about today. Um, so the, the, the first part of this talk is, is about what AIGLX is, how it works, and some of the, the problems uh, we had when we tried to do this. Um, the next, uh, the second half of this talk will be about what kind of problems are still in there, what doesn't work, and um, what 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 needed to, to finish this work. Um, so it, it's um, it's a kind of a step back from AI to next, and more looking at the positive desktop such as companies kind of amazing features we still have. And, 
again, the extra was on the other side of the ne network request uh, connection, receives the rendering request, and passing, um, and, and, and renders this command. The way it used to work was that in, in, in this indirect case where the X server receives the rendering request over the network, um, the X server would have a software implementation of the OGL um, API. So if you wanted to render a triangle, it would go into software that would do scan line conversion of the triangle, um, perform the texture lookups, and, and then render the, the, the triangle step by step. This will all be done in software, and eventually the, the open yellow implementation will cover this onto the screen. And that's, of course, way slower than if you have hardware acceleration. So, so for, for a while, indirect rendering was slow and, and software, and direct rendering, which is the other case, was the fast hardware acceleration. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm recovering from my code, so if I'm too incoherent because of yeah. being stuffed up, just let me know and I'll talk slower on. Alright, so, so as I mentioned, that, that's, a, that's another mode of operation for, for the uh, OpenGL uh, binding. This is the direct mode, and in, in this case, Programs the hardware and then 
and the hardware does the rendering. This, this is also synchronous with, with fast rendering on exhibit rendering. And, and for a long time, indirect rendering was software and slow, slow software rendering. The extra, I said the extra doesn't know what happens, but it is, it is, it is part of the game some, somewhat because you still need to respect the, the overlapping windows you have in X. So if you have an X window, you, you're running GLX windows and then Tox Racer, and you drag another window on top of your, your Tox Racer window, the, the, the rendering has to respect that window. Um, so you can't just render across your X term, whatever it is you're, you're, you're having on top of your Tox Racer window. So, Whenever, whenever the windows move or the, the clip regs change, there's, there's synchronization going on between the, the, the direct rendering client and the X server. So, so the X server says, oops, you have to reread the clip list, and whenever the, the direct rendering client is ready to do, do some rendering, it goes and rereads the clip list so that it doesn't override the, the, the X server or the window. That was the indirect rendering. Okay, so accelerated indirect, which is, is what AIDLX is, is the case where we, we, we basically want the X server to load the hardware driver and use the hardware driver to, to uh, implement the, the rendering requests as they can come in. So we want to we want to make the X server work the way it normally does for, for normal X request, except we want to do it for TV as well. But the, the reason why we have direct rendering in the first place is that um, we want performance. Um, with, the, with the X server, with the normal rendering, we don't really need that much performance. And um, I mean, the, 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 the overhead for, we need performance of course, but the overhead for, for doing the marshalling and, 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 and the network access is, is negligible compared to the X server rendering, especially if you have to fall back to software. So when, when you see your X server being slow, if your scrolling is slow, if uh, PDF document runs slowly, it's typically because we have to fall back to software and do some operations in software. It's only because we spend too much time sending network packets back and forth. It's, it's always software fallback or um, um, something in, in that. But, but for, for own here, you know, we never do software fallback. It's always, mostly always hardware. And, and since we're running Quake and we want the, the biggest possible frame rate per second, uh, everything, everything matters. So, so if, we, if we can avoid the network access here, we might get one or two extra frames per second in break. And then that's one of the reasons uh, we DI directly <coughs> the space. So, so it is mostly the problem. So the, the question is, we, we have direct rendering, which is faster than, than indirect rendering, and, and it does the same why we want to accelerate anyways. And, and there, there's a few reasons. I mean, well, I, I'm listening to like, it's taking a draw, which is which is probably the primary drive that did this work. Um, so for for Compiz, the, the composite render, Compiz is an OpenGL application that renders the entire screen, the entire desktop using OpenGL, and it does so using the composite extension. What the composite extension allows you to do is you take the contents of a window, and normally when clients, the application is rendered to an, an X window, it's rendered directly into the, the frame buffer. You, you, you see the contents appear on screen as, as the application is rendered. What composite does is it takes all that rendering, and without the application knowing so, all the rendering now happens to an off screen buffer. So the, the application will go and queue a number of rendering requests, and the Excel will perform these rendering requests. But it won't actually appear on the screen as it usually did. It will go into an off-screen buffer. <coughs> and this is why he wants or needs all this uh, video memory, because we, don't, we need video memory for these off-screen buffers. But that's a, that's a different topic. It's, it's pretty clever, actually, because that allows us then to determine how we're going to composite, how we're going to combine these off-screen buffers on screen. And this is where stuff like transparent windows becomes possible because we can do this in a, in a, in a second step. We, we can um, use uh, extra channels in, in the, in the pixmap to, to um, determine the, the transparency of these pixels. And, and if we can scale our windows as, as, um, as, as Compiz does. And, and 
composite gives us all these possibilities and, and, and compete actually implemented. But to, to, to go from the optical feedbacks to something that like we can use for rendering, we, we need some way to go from the peak map in X server video memory, or at least X server memory, to then texture, to a texture that, that we can use for rendering uh, when we use OpenGL to render the data. And this is, this is a, the, the texture from the drawable extension. It's called texture from peak map now, so it's, uh, this, this was, um, this is the extension. So that allows us to take an XP map and use that as a texture. Um, so as, as, and, and as Keith, Keith mentions, when, when talking about moving the entire X server to, to XGL, uh, to OpenGL is probably not feasible because there might be deviations between different OpenGL implementations. But, but doing it this way, once we have OpenGL accelerated available inside the server, we can, we can do this piecewise. It turns out that that's a really good way to accelerate, say, X video using OpenGL. We, we, we can do that for one driver where we have that uh, BT available. Um, it turns out we, we can do some of the, the compositing from random using OpenGL in a specific driver. We, we, we can enable that and, and, and use that. So it, it, it opens up a lot of this um, work inside the X server. And, and, and as such, it's, it's, um, it is, it's an enabling thing that it is. And, and of course, the ability to object to use accelerate OpenGL across a network is, is interesting in itself. If you have um, your 3D, uh, if you have an X server that has the possibility to load a, a 3D driver, you can actually have an accelerated X on your desktop and run the, the application from, a, from a, an application server somewhere so, so that you, you, you can get accelerated 3D in this case. Of course, the, the, the caveat in this case is that if you have textures, you need to have time transfer. In this case, this, this is the, the drawback. You have to send the textures over the network. With direct rendering, you can, you can download the textures directly because client and driver is on in the same cluster space. But all in all, the external indirect X is, is, um, is interesting because we, 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 we can then accelerate uh, these uh, positive methods that everybody uses these days. <coughs> So how do we do this? Um, so from from a two twenty thousand feet perspective, it's it's, uh, it's easy because we just need to be, let, let the X server load the DRI driver in, in pretty much the same way that the client would load the, the DRI driver. So and and a lot of the the, the, the talk that the, um, the, the that the client does with the excerpt during the setup to start up phase. For example, the client has the excerpt to use port, um, direct rendering, where's your frame buffer. There, there's sort of a ping pong going on between the client and the excerpt during the startup. All this is now just internal to the excerpt. So we, we can just call into a different part of the excerpt to say, this support, get direct rendering, where's your frame buffer. So all this takes place inside the excerpt now. There's no protocol going out on the, the wire. Um, and the excerpt already has a module infrastructure, so we, um, we can use DLO in the X server to, to load the DRI bar, to link it in and, and, and call into it. Um, we, need, we need to provide some, some functionality to the DRI bar so that the DRI bar can um, call into the X server for, for various pieces of information. And In, in, in general, it, it, is, it isn't that big a task. It's just um, a matter of deloading the driver and then tweaking the interfaces to, to make sure that the driver can get information it needs to the X server and vice versa. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to skip this slide. This is about how we initialize the visual system. <coughs> kind of messy, but it was messy before and it's still messy. Um, so what, one of the, the more interesting case problems that we ran into doing this work was the, the DRI block. So in, in the case where we have direct rendering, we have an application over here that loads the driver to, to program the hardware. So this, this driver will tell the hardware to go on and render the driver. At the same time, we have the X over here trying to 
say Uber window around by putting the hardware to copy what part of the screen to another. So both these applications are trying to access the same hardware and program it to do different things. So we need to synchronize this in some way. And, and, and the way to do this typically is to put a big old lock around the whole thing. So that's the DRI. The way it works is that the, the DRI driver knows that it has to synchronize access to the hardware. It knows that there might be different DRI drivers running. You can have two copies of DRI so you can have Craig over here and then you can have Tracer here. And you, you can have several clients running at the same time and you need, you need to respect that. So the DRI driver that we know so that we know in the client to, to, to do the rendering already knows this, knows about the line. It takes it whenever it's about to, to keep your submit command to render and releases it once it's done. On the other hand, the X server doesn't know about the lock. It thinks that what we start the X server and the X server assumes that it just owns the hardware. But um, so most of the drivers are, are written to, to just render and expect whatever they submit to the card is still valid the next time they come around and try to render. But that's not the case in this because we might from from one you submit a uh, rendering request in the X server, maybe the X server gets swapped out and the direct rendering time runs and draws a few frames of QX here, and then the X server swapped in again, and now the state is completely different from when the last time it touched the hardware. So we need some mechanism around this to, to, to make sure that the X server doesn't get confused. So, so what we do is, as, as soon as we receive a, quest, a request from the, the server, we take the DRI log and restore the state that the X server expects to see, and then we go off and, and render the request as usual. And then when, when we flush the pipe and we render all the requests that were sitting in our bottle, and just before we go back to sleep and wait for the next request, we release the log so that if the DRI driver will be able to acquire the log and do the render we need to So, so that's, a, that's a, a ping pong between the X server and the, the client, the direct rendering client that, that, that is well to you and, and it's it's not the most efficient way to do things, but it works. And um, so they, they, they ping pong when they are back and forth. <laughs> yeah, as far so the question is if this love issue is, is responsible for the 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 the, 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 the the freezing, when you drag an application around and the application freezes, doesn't run until you let go of the window. And, and as far as I know, this, this, this is part of the problem. Um, because and as, as you grab the window to drag it around, the X server is just saturated with re requests to move the window around. It doesn't release it out while you move, it, the, move the window around. And the application is, is in, on the other hand, trying to render. But it sees that the log is taken all the time as you move the window around. So it just sits there and waits for the log to be released. Which isn't really until you uh, they close the window and, and stop moving. So this is this as it's not the most efficient way because you get you get attacked like this where it's still rendering. But it, it basically works. And the, the better way to, to do this would be if, if the X server actually knew about the log and it could could only take it for that short amount of time we actually need to do to, to render it. So if you submit uh, an X request to the public window from one part of the screen to another or, or whatever it is the X server needs to do, then we will probably um, see this issue go away. Um, or if you could have a completely lockless architecture where you submit requests and the driver just renders it, but that, that's, that's a different topic. But anyway, the, the interesting part is that with this lock setup, we, we, we get into a funny situation because we have a driver that, the DRI driver that tries to grab the lock before it does its 3D rendering. And now we're trying to run that from within the X server. So as what happens is that the X server receives a request of the network saying, please render these 3D triangles. And then it, it goes and grabs the lock because it, well, that's what it does when it receives the request. And then calls into the, to the DRI driver to render it. And then the DRI driver will think that oh, I need to grab the lock before this render. But the X server already has the lock, so we have a recursive deadlock here. Um, because we're trying to run a driver that grabs the lock from inside the lock. So, so we have to do some, some hacking uh, around this. And, and the, the, the simple way to do this is to just 
see if a request, if a request comes in, and it turns out that this is a 3D request, then before calling into the driver to, to render the request, we just release the lock, call into the driver, and now the driver will say, oh, let me grab the lock and render this stuff, and that will succeed because we just let go of the lock. So the driver will be able to render whatever it renders, and then it will release the lock and return to the X server. And the X server will then immediately retake the lock in case we were about to do some 2D rendering. So the X server takes the lock, and eventually the X server uh, releases the lock and goes back to sleep. So this, this actually works fairly well. I mean, the, the whole taking and releasing of locks is not cheap because it's not just taking the lock, it's also about restoring the state of the graphics card to, to be what the X server or the free drive expects. But in, in, in the end, there's not much of a performance penalty to measure here, but there definitely um, it could be more efficient. Um, okay, so so take that from Rome, well, this is this is, this is a big um, one of the big items for, for doing this, the big motivation. And and um, the thing is now that we have the 3D driver running from within the extra memory um, address space, we, we can say, all right, but the pitch map functions here, because the pitch map is, is, a, is an X server object, it lives in the X server address space, and now we have the, uh, the 3D driver in the X server address space too. So we can say to the driver, all right, we've got this pitch map over here, this is your texture. So the, the implementing texture and pitch map is, is fairly simple now, because we can we can just point to that pitch map. And there's a number of ways to do this. The best way would be if we have that pitch map sitting in, in video memory on the car. Um, so, and, and typically that's what the extra will do. It will keep the, the video memory to the pitch map in an off screen buffer on the, in the video memory. And as you render your glyphs and bring the rectangles, whatever you do to the window. That, that, that drawing will uh, accumulate into the off screen model in video memory. And then when we want a texture, uh, we want to render a polygon, a uh, triangle, and we want to use that pixel as a texture, we can just point the 3D stack to that video memory area with the pixel and use that as a texture. So that, that's the ideal case, but it doesn't work that way. Um, um, I'll get into that later, but I'm going to what what what. For now, what, what we're doing is we, we just ask the X server to, to not put the pitch maps into video memory, but keep the pitch maps in, in host memory. So whenever you, you um, do, do your rendering to a window, the, all of this rendering is this rendering to host memory, which is regular uh, memory of your computer. Um, and when we want to use it as a texture, we want to open GL stack to this host memory uh, area. And the, the 3D stacks downloads the, the host memory and sets up the texture. So we, we have this going back and forth from host memory to video memory all the time. Uh, or, or not back and forth. We go from host memory copy into video memory on, on every um, on every memory object. So that's that's what we're doing now. It's not it's one of the biggest performance bottlenecks in, in the uh, composite the desktops uh, as, as we've seen at today. And it's not something we like to face. Then what happens is that 
we, we have DRI data, we, we split the rest of that memory into two halves. And, and the X will manage one half of the video memory, and the three stack will manage another part of that video memory. So, so we have two sections of the video memory. We can really move objects around the X will also understand the DRI memory, the DRI will also understand the X memory. So the problem is that if, if we run into to, to the peak stack, this picture will live, live in the X server half of video memory. And when we want to use it as a texture, we, we really need it to be in the 3D driver part of the video memory. But it's over that other half, so we, we can't do that. Um, so, so what we'd like to, to do here is to just have one big view of memory on the card. And, 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 and this is what the, the work that Keith mentioned, that the Thompson guys are doing this work, doing a, a current level the memory manager for the, the video memory. So that you can you can have your video memory, you can allocate an object in video memory and say, all right, this is a buffer and the X server is going to render some stuff into it, thinking it's a pick map. And then later on you go and as the DI driver, you use this buffer as, as a texture. And the DI driver will use that same buffer in the contents in there as a texture. So the, the work they're doing will allow, allow this to work and we can have a serial copy text from pick map, which we will then get rid of the slow scrolling and, and, and the, the performance like we, we are seeing in, in, in companies and in accelerators, composite desktops. Um, the other thing is that we have some um, regressions in, in functionality. So the way that, that, that direct rendering works is that um, and as I said at the beginning of the talk, the, 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 the direct running time asks the X server for the address of the frame buffer, and then it knows the driver and renders straight into the frame buffer. But if, if we're running a composite desktop, it shouldn't be doing that. It should be rendering into that piece of we set aside for the, the, the window contents. But the, the direct rendering driver doesn't know about this and just renders it to the front buffer as it's always done. And it, it doesn't doesn't work that well. So, so on the surface it looks like it's working because this is still next year is running in direct rendering mode. But when you try to move the window around, it's, it's obvious that it's not working. Because, so the window stays there. <laughs> and then when the window settles down, the the, the content move. And the, the thing is that the compiles doesn't actually update the X server's idea of where the window is until you, you the window settles down. I mean, as long as it's walking like this, you, you can't really tell that the X service is wobbly shape, so it doesn't even try. But the moment you, you let it go, it settles down and says, all right, I got a new position. It says, this is where it should be running. So it's, it's only when it actually has a, a final position moves it around. Another thing is that it doesn't respect the clip lists here because um, Um, I'm trying to think what the problem is. I, I think that we have a the window stacking is different because we have a big window sitting in front of the whole desktop. So none of these none of these windows are visible anyway in, in the exit <laughs> because that's a big window sitting in front of it. That, and, but companies does not render into this window, so we, we see the window anyway. But the the again the DOI driver does not respect this and then just renders into the framework. So 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 that's something we need to fix. What what's um, what we need to do here is, is the, again ties into the memory manual work because um, we we could tell the um, we could tell the, the um, the eyebrow to say when you ask for the frame buffer address, we could in, in theory point it to a different address and say this is where it should be rendering, and then give it, it give it the address of uh, the, the peak map we, we wanted to render to. But there's no more problems with that approach. Um, it just, so with the technical from peak map idea, we the way it's implemented now we actually need to have this contents in host memory. But if we did did it for, for direct rendering, it would end up in in video memory. And so we, we couldn't easily use that video in the memory image as a texture. So so that was 
Another thing is that even though when we look at the, the, the dark window window here, we see, we see the one frame of, of data here, but there's actually several layers of, of, of data behind an the, the OGL frame. Um, like OGL can do double buffering, which in which case it will render to the back buffer. And then when you say swap, it will copy that comes from the back buffer into the front buffer. <coughs> it also has depth buffers that, that, that tracks the depth of each pixel, so that if you render a new pixel in there, and that pixel is, is, is in front of that pixel that was there already, it'll, it'll cover it. But if the, pixel, the new pixel you're rendering turns out to be behind it, it'll just not update that pixel and keep the old value in place. It's got um, other types of buffers, stencil buffers, and there's a the number of buffers. And all these buffers are allocated out of a big chunk of memory the same way that we allocate um, from buffers. So, so if we try to render into these buffers, they, they they still they they, they want um, they will still clip the rendering according to the old level windows and what we really want is we want a dedicated buffer for for say the depth buffer a double buffer and that means that the three D driver needs to know how to allocate a buffer it doesn't know that right now it just takes a chunk out of a big screen size buffer and then uses that <coughs> um, so so with the memory render work the the driver will, will be able to go and, and request a dedicated buffer for back buffer, for depth buffer, and it can then set up and can render to an, an off-screen piece map the same way we do it for a uh, regular um, As you mentioned, <coughs> uh, we have another problem, which is input generation. And um, so, so if we, in the expose case, this is when so he didn't demo it, but I can, I can show <coughs> So I have I got two two windows here and this is my laptop, it's a 1024 by 768 screen, so there's not a lot of space. So I have copy between two windows. I I I have to resize them and put them next to each other. Or I can use the the the, the feature of, of compies, which will if I throw the mouse pointer up into the corner, we will scale it down like that. And I get a view of all the windows on my desktop. But the extra doesn't know that the windows have been resized and moved around like this. The extra does still think that the, the three windows are more or less full screen size and all sit on top of each other. So if, 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 I, if I could click into this window, the, the extra would actually think that the mouse cursor is, is up here in, in the upper corner of the window even though it looks like it's almost in, in the middle of the window. And if I want to select this text here, I would be clicking up here instead of so what looks in the middle. So the, the point again is that the extra doesn't know that the windows have been moved around and scaled like this. So it, it still tries to map input into the windows according to where it thinks the windows are. So, so in this case, Compass is, is clever enough about this because it doesn't try to let me drag an icon. Uh, like, what, what would be useful if you actually could drag, drag this icon into this folder if I wanted to copy files from? So I click here and I drag it down here. But, but Compass doesn't let me do that because it doesn't work. So what it instead does is that I, I can click on the window and select that window to be focused. Like this. And, and that's sort of the limit of what you can do. And what happens here is that Compies company, is destroying the windows. So Compies knows that the windows have been scaled down to a cloud. And Compies can, can, um, can highlight the windows as a move over with the mouse. Like this. But I can actually interact with the windows in this thing. So as Keith mentioned, the, the um, input redirecting work that David has been doing actually lets the application instruct the external how to map input to windows. So if this window here is, is thrown away off in the corner and scaled down, the, the um, compositing manner can inform X on this by um, sending it as a, a set of triangles that describe the relation between the window as it appears on screen and how it actually is in the external. So with that in place, we, we should be able to finally get a composite working on what, like how, we, how it was meant to be. So there's a few two items left still, but um, it's it's uh, getting there. Yep. Questions?
zwei. Characters into the buffer, 
Um, Mongo's cards are able to accelerate this compositing into the, the but in this case, we fall back to software in the two. So we have to composite the, the, the individual character and so forth. So, so this is slow, and, and once we've done that, we have to cover that entire buffer out to video to do the texture to, to render the new frame uh, on the screen. So that, that's a big bottleneck right now. But hopefully, if we once the memory manager is in place, and we can we can just render it into one video memory buffer of objects. So we can reuse that object in the X server and the three D stack, and we want that to copy anything. We can accelerate or render. So that, that's the idea. It's still not there, but we know how to do it. One last question. What about window resizing? Resizing? Yeah, that, that's a more involved issue. It, it, it really comes down to um, that and some applications like to slow the resizing. And, and um, um, that, 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 that's a hard one. You know, there's a lot more factors involved here. Um, but we, we definitely need to do that. And then some of the things that are interesting that we can do with the process is that we can actually synchronize the resizing between the application and the window manager. Before there was no synchronization, you resize the window and the application would get a number of resize events and try to keep up as best as it can. And you get these half random windows. But now you can actually synchronize it and you resize the window. And once the, the application has rendered a new frame, there's a composite window and you re-render that. You get consistent resizing, but it's still something. Thank you.